Trent Martin, the uh, Johnson Space Center's project manager for the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer, is here with us in Mission Control today for an interview. And so, uh, welcome in, Trent. Thanks, I appreciate it. Uh, great to have you here today and to talk about uh, AMS, as we call it on the International Space Station. Uh, can you start off telling us a little bit about what an Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer does? Sure. Uh, the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer is a high energy physics experiment. Um, that was built by a collaboration of 60 different institutes from 16 different countries and led by a Nobel laureate from MIT um, that uh, combines a system of state-of-the-art high-energy particle physics uh, detectors uh, to sift through the particles that are constantly bombarding the Earth. Uh, we do it in space uh, simply because most of these charged particles would not make it to the ground, um, so the space station provides that perfect uh, test bed for us to, to to utilize and, uh, and actually measure these particles as they come through the detector. The detector looks for um, uh, what type of particles we have, so you can, you can tell the difference between a, a helium atom and a, or an anti-helium atom. Um, the, the main science that we're looking for is antimatter science, dark matter science, uh, and, and other cosmic array pop propagation in the universe. And I got to ask you, why should I care about dark matter and antimatter and all those cosmic rays? Well, AMS is a detector that's essentially designed to probe the foundations of the universe. Uh, so, the data that we'll gather from AMS, we will we will utilize for years to come to help to identify what was the universe like at the beginning, what is it like now, and where are we going? Um, how how was it made up? Is half the universe made out of antimatter? What is dark matter? What is that 90% of the universe that we now know exists, but we don't know what it is? Okay. Well, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, how did you get to this point in your career? Where are you from? Um, I'm from all over the Midwest in Texas. Uh, I uh, went to the University of Texas, have an aerospace engineering degree. I have a master's degree in business administration from the University of Houston Clear Lake. Um, so why would I be working with a bunch of physicists? Well, mainly because NASA has the responsibility to do the, the project management and integration of this, uh, of this high energy physics experiment. So as an engineer, I have to work with uh, 600 physicists, engineers, and technicians across the globe, uh, most of them being funded by other agencies, to work together to build this experiment, to operate this experiment. Um, it's, a, it's a very interesting uh, process, and uh, it's been a learning experience for me. Tell us a little bit about what it was like growing up as a kid when you grew up, and, and did you ever think you might be here doing this? No, absolutely not. Um, I, I grew up in small towns. Um, never thought I would ever say that I've been to as many foreign countries as I've been to. Um, no, there, there was no way that as a kid I ever said that I would be doing this, but NASA has afforded that opportunity because of the international collaborations that we have, um, in particular with the International Space Station, AMS is interesting in that we have as many countries as the space station has countries, but they're different countries, and they're typically not the space uh, institutions, so they're not, um, they're not JAXA and those types of agencies. Instead, they're the physics institutions from those different countries. Um, so certainly I've met a lot of people. Um, very interesting people that um, that are learning things about this universe that uh, there's no way I ever thought I would be part of that. Okay. Um, tell us a little bit about why AMS uh, can take advantage of the space station. What's important about the space station for they being able to conduct this experiment? So the biggest advantage that we have with the International Space Station is that the space station provides us uh, power and data. Um, if we had to provide that on our own, if we decided to make uh, the AMS a free-flying satellite, we would have had to have provided our own communication systems, our own power systems, our own uh, um, data systems that, that we currently get from the International Space Station. So that allowed us to focus the amount of weight that we had available to launch into science. So more detector weight uh, basically means we get better science because we're on the International Space Station. Okay. 
Hey, we had a couple of uh, Twitter questions. We advertised your interview in advance, and we got uh, several different good questions from folks out there. Uh, I'd like to ask you those right now, and, and the first one is pretty basic. It's, it's from uh, uh, Corey McDonald, uh, and uh, uh, Corey asks, uh, how many particles has AMS collected? So that's a fairly easy question to answer, and actually, you can look for yourself. If you go to ams.nasa.gov, I put a particle counter on the front of our website, and uh, I just looked just prior to this interview. We are currently at 12.8 billion particles measured. We are measuring at a rate of about 1 to 1.2 billion particles per month uh, on AMS. We're measuring particles 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year, 366 this year. Um, and we have a, a, a cadre of, of op operations team in Geneva that are constantly monitoring the payload, making sure that thermally and electrically everything is going smoothly, and making sure that the data is coming down through the, through the proper systems and making its way to the science community. And that's billion with a B, right? A big B. Um, is that with more or less than you ex were anticipating? We actually are measuring a, all, a little bit less than two times what we expected to measure. Um, we, we were a little bit surprised when we first got up there and we started measuring data at a rate uh, a little bit less than twice what we were expecting. Uh, we've managed to um, uh, deal with that in, in our systems. Uh, we had some robust capabilities in our systems that allowed us to handle that. We've done some things to ensure that we're not overwhelming the space station data systems. Um, but at times, we are using as much as one-third of the bandwidth coming down from space station uh, particularly at night when we're not downloading video, uh, we, we can burst down AMS data and, and get it to the scientists in Geneva. Wow, double the data. Uh, the next question comes from uh, Morgan Spice, and I'm using their Twitter handles here. I don't know if it's a real name, but they're asking, do you think it's possible that our Big Bang is just one of many ongoing Big Bangs? So that's an interesting question, and AMS uh, most likely will not be able to answer that question. Um, we can look back almost to the beginnings of the universe with AMS over the time frame that we expect to be on the International Space Station. Essentially, the longer you're there, the, the further back in time you're looking. Um, so with that, we can see back to the origins of this universe, maybe back to the beginnings of this Big Bang. If there are multiple Big Bangs, we just won't know that answer from AMS. And, uh, you know, you talked about the potential for the instrument. Um, the Hubble Space Telescope basically rewrote the books on uh, visible and other uh, light ranges uh, in astronomy. Uh, do you anticipate that AMS could have that same kind of uh, effect on our understanding of the universe and, uh, and our thoughts about astronomy? So AMS at times has been called the Hubble Telescope for charged particles. Uh, the reason for that is because over the last 50 years, we've done a tremendous job of studying uh, light rays, uncharged particles. What we haven't done a very good job of is studying charged particles. So with AMS, we built a system that has, I like to say, if you got every high energy physicist into a room and you had them pick out which detector they would put on a high energy physics experiment, we put all those on a list and we put them all onto AMS. Um, so with that, we have the capability to measure a single particle in multiple ways, usually multiple times with different detectors. So with that, we'll be able to um, look at each particle, identify it, um, and ensure that the data that we're getting is accurate. With that accurate data, we hope that, that uh, we'll be able to potentially redefine what we know as high energy physics today. And any idea on when we might be able to hear some of those results? I know that there's a lot of peer review and everything that goes through that. Can you explain that process to us? So the AMS collaboration, as I mentioned before, is made up of 600 physicists, engineers, and technicians from around the world. Um, the way that the, the group works is they take, the, uh, they take and separate those into two separate physics research uh, groups. And they take the data uh, as it comes down, the raw data, and each one of them takes the data and, and analyzes for particular things. They get back together every once in a while and say, well, let's, let's look at this area, let's look at that area, but they want an independent verification of that. That's what we do within our own team. Uh, once that is finalized, we go out for publication. And so that will happen I don't know when, uh, at, with 12.8 billion particles so far, it's a lot of data to go through. And so 
uh, I, I certainly would expect that that sometime, you know, within the next year or so, we would have some data coming out. Um, we certainly have a lot of, of potential with the 12.8 billion particles. And you're still collecting more. <laughs> 1.2 billion particles a month. Okay. The last question I'm going to ask you today, and thanks again for being here, is uh, from, as someone from, from humble beginnings, do you have any advice for kids or students or folks out there that think they might want to get involved in this in the future uh, when you grow up in a small town or even a big city and, and you may have disadvantages, what do you need to do to get through school so that you can take advantage of these kinds of opportunities that might be out there? Yeah, the biggest thing that, that this question comes up sometimes, and, and the biggest thing that, that I always point out is you just have to continue studying your math and science. Um, Go get an education in, in, in an engineering discipline or a, a science discipline and uh, go out there and try. You never know what's, what's going to happen.